Once upon a time, in a small town called Willowbrook, there was a mischievous teenager named Max. At 16 years old, I was always up to some kind of adventure. My wild brown hair and mischievous grin often landed me in unexpected situations, but today's events took the cake. It all began on a sunny Saturday afternoon. The local soccer field was buzzing with excitement as the Willowbrook High School soccer team was getting ready for an important match against our arc rivals, the Briarwood Bullies. As the team captain, I was both nervous and determined to lead my teammates to victory. Little did I know, however, that my biggest challenge would come from an unexpected source. In the stands, the parents gathered, cheering loudly for their respective teams. Among them was a notorious figure known as Karen, a middle-aged woman with a distinctive haircut and a constant scowl on her face. Her son, Ethan, was on the opposing team, and she made it her mission to make everyone's lives miserable. As the game progressed, tensions ran high. The score was tied, and both teams were giving it their all. Suddenly, I received a perfect pass and sprinted toward the goal, ready to take the winning shot. But out of nowhere, Karen's piercing voice echoed across the field, disrupting my concentration. Max, how dare you steal the spotlight from my precious Ethan? You're just a show-off! I rolled my eyes and continued dribbling the ball, trying to ignore her obnoxious comments. However, Karen wasn't one to back down easily. She stormed onto the field, her face contorted with anger. Stop right there, young man, she yelled, her finger pointed accusingly at me. You think you're so special, don't you? I turned to face her, trying my best to maintain my composure. Well, Karen, as much as I appreciate your interest in my life, I'm just trying to play soccer here. Can we get back to the game? Karen's face flushed red with fury. She couldn't stand being dismissed so easily. You'll regret talking back to me, you little brat, she spat, lunging towards me with her hand raised menacingly. In that moment, my instincts kicked in. I dodged her attack with ease, surprising both Karen and the spectators. As she stumbled forward, I couldn't help but quip, Wow, Karen, your soccer skills are really something. Ever considered trying out for the Olympics? The crowd erupted in laughter, their cheers drowning out Karen's furious protests. It was a small victory, but it felt satisfying to stand up to her entitled behavior. The referee intervened, escorting Karen off the field, and the game continued without any further disruptions. As the final whistle blew, signaling our team's victory, I couldn't help but reflect on the events that had unfolded. It was just another day in the life of Max the teenage troublemaker, but I realized that my antics had inadvertently stood up against an entitled parent and her toxic behavior. It turned out that Karen's relentless entitlement stemmed from a deep-rooted fear of her son's perceived inadequacies. Ethan was a talented player, but his mother's constant pressure only served to hinder his progress. Despite the chaos caused by Karen, I couldn't help but feel sorry for Ethan, trapped in the shadow of his mother's expectations. From that day forward, I made it my mission to mentor Ethan, helping him develop his skills without the added pressure from Karen. We spent countless hours practicing together, and slowly but surely, he began to regain his confidence. Over time, Karen's hostility diminished as she saw the positive changes in her son. She even apologized to me, acknowledging her own mistakes. It was a humbling moment, but it reminded me of the power of empathy and understanding. And so, the story of the soccer showdown between Max and Karen became a tale whispered among the people of Willowbrook. It was a reminder that sometimes, even in the face of entitlement and hostility, a little kindness and a sarcastic remark can go a long way in bringing about change. And as for me, Max the mischievous teenager with a wild sense of adventure, I learned that beneath the surface of entitlement, there may lie a chance for growth and redemption, both for the entitled and for those who dare to challenge them. So this was back in college, at the local Walmart that is known for always being. Interesting, I have so many stories from this place. I swear this Walmart is like a Karen Beacon. This story is a bit chaotic. I tried to write it as clearly as I can, but a lot was happening all at once. Some relevant info. I'm pale, 
and at the time I walked with a cane. I have a condition where my heart rate can get too high and my blood pressure can drop and I can pass out from standing too long, usually, but anxiety can bring on episodes too. I wear a headscarf on holidays and special occasions. Now, there are many types and styles of headscarves. On this day, I was wearing it in a style where it completely covered my head and then draped around my neck and was secured with pins. I use dressmaking pins. They're not very visible in the scarf, but they do not have anything covering their pointy ends. I make sure I place them so they will hold the fabric in place and not stick me. Since it is a holiday, I am also wearing traditional clothing. A long skirt, a white shirt with some embroidery on it, and a fabric belt. So I'm going around Walmart picking up a few things. My backpack is in the front of the cart, so I don't have extra weight on me. I'm standing at one of those aisle ends. I was trying to find something and had to look up where it was on my phone. Out of nowhere, my headscarf is ripped off of my head as someone behind me yells terrorist witch. Luckily, the scarf only had the end around my neck, so it pulled on my neck but didn't full on choke me. Still, this definitely activated my fight-flight response. Karen then starts screaming as I turn around. Apparently, one of the pins had stuck her when she ripped my scarf off. She is screaming that I'm a terrorist and that I assaulted her. She wants the manager and the police called, etc. This couple had been down the aisle and saw it happen and ran over. The woman kinda threw her sweatshirt on my head and got between me and Karen. I was panicking at first, but realized she was trying to help cover my head, and the man with her had also gotten between us and was yelling at Karen. The man then grabbed my scarf back and handed it to his partner, who handed it to me, and she took her sweatshirt and held it up around my head to sort of block people's view of my head while I tried to get my scarf back on. The Karen is still screaming that she wants the police to arrest me, and how dare the man yell at her. She is digging through her purse to find pepper spray because she wants to spray me and the man. I honestly didn't even wrap my scarf properly. I wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. A nearby employee had come out of an aisle to see what was happening and ran off to get the manager, I'm assuming. The man is still yelling back at Karen and has confiscated the pepper spray from her. Karen is screaming that I'm a traitor to my own race along with her earlier insults and is demanding that the man pin me to the floor so she can pepper spray me and do a citizen's arrest and keep me there until the police and FBI arrive. So at this point, I'm shaking and crying. My heart rate is extremely high, and I know I need to leave or I'm going to pass out. The nice woman asked if I wanted to leave. I nodded. She grabbed my backpack and the arm that I'm not holding the cane in, and she quickly walked me down the aisle and out of the store. We just left my cart where it was. She asked where my car was, and I tried explaining that I'm a college student and have to wait for the bus, but I'm coughing and trying to breathe, as my heart rate is well over 180 at this point. The woman sees this and explains that she is a nurse and I'm clearly not okay and asks about my medical condition and what I need. I explained what it is and that I need to sit lay down because I'm gonna pass out. She offered me to sit in their van, which usually would obviously be a no, but we are standing in the middle of a parking lot and I'm about to pass out and currently my brain is not getting very much oxygen. She opens this side door and I sit on the edge of the car and promptly faint. I wake up a few minutes later, and she's holding my wrist in one hand, checking my pulse and looking at her watch. I mumble something so she knows I'm awake, and she just keeps telling me it's okay, I'm doing fine. After I recover a bit, I sit up and realize the man is standing outside the car. I think he was trying to give me privacy. I asked for the Gatorade from my backpack and sip on that. Helps with the fainting, while he explains what was going down. He says that the manager showed up with store security and he explained, over Karen's screaming, what happened and handed her pepper spray to the security guy and that the police had been called. I look over and sure enough, there's cop cars pulled to the front of the store. The man asked if I had been hurt, if I wanted to talk to the police. Honestly, I'm scared of cops and just wanted to go home, so I declined to talk to the police. The man then went back inside to talk to the police a bit more, and I tried to fix my scarf a little better. 
I had lost a few pins through all this, which was kind of annoying, so I couldn't wrap it how it was earlier. The nice woman told me my heart rate had been around 200 when I passed out, and luckily it had come down again quickly because she had considered calling an ambulance. She lets me know her partner is texting her and reads out to me what is going down back in the store. As it turns out, I didn't need to press charges. Karen was so infuriated that the nice man would help a terrorist to get away, so she got a bit. Aggressive. She was yelling at the manager, security, and the police officers when the man came back in. When she saw him, she ripped out her pepper spray and was screaming at him. The cop then grabs her arm to stop her, so she tries to pepper spray the cop, but gets taken down and cuffed. The nice woman is positively gleeful as she tells me about Karen getting tackled. Apparently, then Karen started screaming about suing the cops, getting the FBI involved, the classic Karen stuff. I didn't get to see Karen get taken off to jail, sadly. My bus pulled up and the nice woman helped me over to it, but I was at least glad that she ended up where she deserves. Once upon a time, in the My Peaceful Town, there was a young woman named Lily Thompson. At the tender age of 25, I had found my place in this cozy little town, working as a librarian and relishing the tranquility it offered. But little did I know that an encounter with an entitled parent would soon disrupt my serene existence. It all began on a sunny Saturday afternoon. I was strolling through the town park, enjoying the gentle breeze on my face when, out of the blue, a high-pitched shriek pierced the air. I turned around to see a commotion near the playground. Curiosity getting the better of me, I hurried over to investigate. As I approached, I spotted a red-faced woman with a belligerent expression. She was berating a young boy named Timmy, who couldn't have been more than six years old. The woman, later revealed to be Karen, a fitting name for her kind, was undoubtedly the epitome of an entitled parent. Timmy, you better get up and let my precious angel have a turn on the swing. How dare you hog it for so long, Karen bellowed, her voice dripping with indignation. But I've only been here for a few minutes, ma'am, Timmy replied, his voice trembling. Unwilling to let such an injustice unfold before my eyes, I decided to intervene. Excuse me, ma'am, but I believe Timmy has every right to enjoy his turn on the swing. It's only fair. Karen whipped around, her eyes narrowing at me. And who do you think you are, young lady? Interfering in matters that don't concern you? I smirked, bracing myself for the battle of wits that was about to ensue. Well, ma'am, since you're curious, I happen to be a concerned citizen who believes in fairness. It's a rare trait, I know. Karen's face reddened further, a mix of anger and embarrassment. How dare you speak to me like that? I demand respect. I couldn't resist a sarcastic remark. Respect is earned, not demanded dear Karen. As expected, Karen's entitlement got the better of her. With a fiery glare, she lunged towards me, her fist aimed at my face. But little did she know I had been taking self-defense classes for years preparing for such audacious encounters. Using her momentum against her, I swiftly sidestepped her attack, causing Karen to lose her balance and stumble forward. The onlookers gasped, surprised by Karen's failed attempt to physically attack me. In that moment, the villain of our story revealed her true colors, losing her temper and any remaining shreds of dignity. With a mixture of rage and humiliation, Karen screeched, You will pay for this, you insolent brat! I couldn't help but chuckle, relishing in the irony of her words. Oh, dear Karen! It seems you're the one who needs a lesson in manners. Amid the chaos, a kind-hearted bystander had called the police, who arrived just in time to defuse the situation. The officers listened to both sides of the story and swiftly determined that Karen's aggressive behavior was unwarranted. As the police escorted Karen away, she continued to hurl insults and threats, her face twisted in fury. Meanwhile, Timmy was finally able to enjoy his well-deserved turn on the swing, a small victory against the forces of entitlement, 